there's this thing that's been doing the rounds for a couple of days. I showed this yesterday on my Facebook group, Mars Magazine, right? It's a metal panel and I can't really match it up to the wreckage from the rover. Now, I've already showed in the past, I've already showed this image uh, not that long ago, I think a couple of months back, I showed this set of images here showing some of the wreckage from the landing. Now, the rover, as most of you will know, was multiple stage kind of landing, right? This is the actual protective back shell part of the rover. And this is what it looks like. And we've got all these rivets going around here. We've got these little panels that are broken off with rivets and holes. And then we have this thing that was uh, spotted. I actually spotted this yesterday morning um, and put it up on Facebook in, in the sort of early afternoon. Uh, but other people have found it as well. Lots of people have spotted this. I think John Ward put up a video about the same time as this yesterday as well. So a uh, credit to him also. And uh, check out his channel. Uh, but the weird thing about this is, is that it's kind of wedged in between these rocks here. And what I've got here, I've got um, a gigapan for you to check out. Now this gigapan isn't actually complete. So by the time you watch this video, this may be even bigger, this gigapan. Uh, because there's what, the images missing up here at the top and one there as well, which I've now sorted out. But uh, the main thing is just here, and it's wedged in between these kind of rocks here, right? Some of, and some of these rocks are really, really strange, like this one here in front. Incredible, right? It's got like square parts on it. It's got this weird kind of curve coming down. Very interesting stuff. Heavily eroded, of course. And I'm not saying all these rocks are artificial. I'm not claiming anything like that. Most of them are completely natural, but some of them really don't look it. They're very, very strange, some of them. But there's the actual panel. I'm calling this a metal panel because it's, it's highly reflective. It's clearly made of metal, some kind of alloy. And it's not anything like any of the material in the area, in this particular area. Now, the problem is, if this is part of the rover wreckage, landing wreckage, then um, it should match, okay, it should match up some of the images that I've been studying for years now, well at least for a year, a year and a half or so with this rover, and uh, it doesn't match up any of the panels on the outside of the actual rover wreckage, doesn't quite match. It's a similar luminosity, so it's obviously made of a similar material, but a lot of this is is uh, alloy but a lot of this is actually carbon fiber it's not even metal um, there are ob obviously are metal parts on these rovers quite a lot of metal parts aluminium and other other types of metal as well lightweight stuff but a lot of it is carbon fiber and composite materials but we also have these foil like materials inside some of the rover parts here now I've been looking at loads of rover images of the building stages of the rover, which you can get from this page here, um, Mars Exploration Program, okay? And there's loads and loads of these images, and I've gone right back to the beginning stages of when they were building the rover to try and see if it's one of the internal parts of the construction, maybe some kind of heat shielding panel or whatever, because it's got these weird perforations in it here. You can see these perforations. In fact, I'll show you up close. It's getting really close. Now, this is the rule clip here. Let's have a look at that first. Right, there we are. Get that centered a bit. You can see these holes, and they're all in a row. There, going across diagonally. There's a bunch there, a bunch there. There's dozens of them, right? And they're all perfectly spaced out, right? Now, there's a bit of damage to this. It's a bit crumpled and, and, and folded over. And... Uh, it's not in a great shape, this thing. So it's obviously kind of landed here or ended up here. But is it part of the rover? Um, I would say it's pretty likely to be. Um, but I can't find anything to match it yet. And I've been going through a lot of images. It doesn't match any of the outer panelling. It doesn't match what I can see of the insulation on the inside. Um, but it may have been 
it may be part of, of the, the land, one of the landing stages that, that um, is not visible in a lot of these photographs. It may be an internal bit of panelling or, or insulation or something, okay? I don't know. Um, I can't match it up. But let's see the enhanced clip here. So you can actually see these no, quite well, these holes. or there, Are they rivets? Are they um, perforations? They look like perforations to me which you might get in some kind of um, alloy sheeting, metal sheeting. That's what it looks like. Um, so very interesting, this one. And people have been posting it all over the internet today. I mean, I posted it yesterday, but it's all over Twitter as well. People are showing it and they, they don't seem to have a, an explanation for it. And I'm talking people from NASA and other sort of uh, NASA scientists and stuff as well so um, you'd think they would say oh this is part of the rover but they, they're not which I find a bit strange so uh, no one's been able to match it up yet which is rather weird so this may not be part of the rover it probably is that's my estimation I can't guarantee either way at the moment because I cannot match it so it's still unexplained so far I would say uh, but the likelihood is it is probably part of the rover panelling internal, it may be internal, it possibly even an external part that, that um, came off of one of the uh, descent stages. And um, like I said, there, there are loads and loads of pages of these images, right, which I've been going through. Now, of course, a lot of them don't really show enough close detail of the rover itself to match up the detail because they're taken at a slight distance. So here's one here of the uh, the back shell. That's, that's that crashed part we just seen here, right? So we can match these up with other images I've got here. But the panelling doesn't have those holes in, okay? Now if I enlarge that and then use the uh, magnifier, let's see if we can see any little perforations like we've got in this metal panel. I can't see any. I mean, it's totally smooth, but of course it could be, like I said, it could be an internal part of this. Um, and the other, the other problem is, of course, um, is that this wreckage we're looking at today, if it is part of the rover, is quite a long way from all the other wreckage. I mean, you're talking about a mile or, or a, somewhere between a kilometre and a mile away. Now, if I show you on here, if you click, well, there'll be links to all this below, by the way, so you can check all this out yourself. If you go up to this part of the image up here, this gives you like a little map of where the other parts are. Now, that's the, the back shell and the, the parachute there, which I just showed you here. This is this stuff here. And then here's an overall map here of, this is the landing zone here, it's the LZ. That's the parachute and back shell there, and there's another part of the rover up here, descent stage that, that came off. Now, we are right over this end, so this is about a mile. We're about a mile to the, to the west of this now. The rover's right over here, off the edge of this map. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna click on this link here, and this will take us to the overall map here. So that load up, there we are. And we can see everything in context, right? Now, where we are now is here, okay? So that's about a kilometre or more from, I would say it's just, about, or about a kilometre from the actual back shell. So whatever this thing is, it's nowhere near all the other parts. It's right over here, okay? We can measure that from here. There's about four, there's about 800 metres. The, ro the rover is actually now beyond this point here, and there's actually over here, right, even further. So it's about a kilometre or so, possibly a mile, from the other wreckage. That's a long way. Which says to me it might not be, um, because you'd think it would be in, in this area where all the other stuff are, is, all the other parts, unless it kind of flew off when the, the uh, descent stage is separated and it kind of flew off in a different direction because they did use an explosive charge to do that, 
to separate the, the various stages. They used the explosive charge when they fired the shoot up, you know. So it is possible a bit of panelling kind of flew off and then sort of went right over here, but that's a long way off. That gives you a kind of idea of the context of the, of the area, right? And uh, the rover is literally, it, it, drove right, it, it drove right round here to here, then all the way back, then all the way up here, and is now driven right over to this area here, and is actually off map here, and is about here. Because we've seen loads of um, images of, the, uh, of this thing here, from, from this angle, from the north, looking south. So there we are, and this is where the actual city area is up here with all the, uh, what look like canals or irrigation channels up here, okay? Now, unfortunately now, we're a long way from the Citadel. The Citadel area is here, right? Down here. And this is where a lot of the other structures, buried structures are, and ruins are here. And you can see more of these irrigation channels here, and walls or whatever they are, okay? And, uh, but now we're right up here and there's not so much to see up here. So we're not seeing very much in the way of ruins, as much in the way of ruins or artifacts because we're a long way off from the actual citadel area, which is much further down. So it's a bit of a shame really because the Perseverance was coming up with some amazing stuff, but now we've moved away from all that stuff and they are in now sort of quite a boring area. Um, but. I'll just give you a bit of context here. This is where the rover is now. You can see the parts of the rover here. There's the actual panel. This isn't very big. And in fact, I think it's about 18 centimetres or 20 centimetres across um, from what I've seen. Um, in fact, I think this guy here put some measurements up, Thomas Appair. Now, Thomas Appair is another Gigapan guy. There we are, 18 centimetres by 10. That's his measurement. That's, I would say that's pretty much bang on. Uh, he seems to have worked it out mathematically and, and uh, scientifically here. He, he's a gigapan guy. He actually, I think, runs um, the Mars Rovers website, Mars Rovers Images website, where you can download all sorts of uh, rover images. A really good website, actually. And he's done some little clips of it here. So, um, People are all onto this and they're trying to figure out what it is because we can't quite match it up. That's really, really strange. You'd think if it was part of the rover, someone would come up and say, oh, that's part of the rover. And uh, a lot of these scientists are on Twitter, you know, I follow them all. And uh, they've gone a bit quiet again, a bit like they did with the doorway when they didn't speak a word about it for a whole week with the doorway. They took a whole week to actually make a comment and when they did they showed us a really dark image which doesn't really show the doorway very well at all and then claimed it was just a crack okay this, yeah this is what we're dealing with here so uh, we get a lot of double speak and, and uh, skullduggery between these uh, different organizations they're, they're huge organizations like NASA and JPL and all these companies uh, my dad used to work for um, for a company that was attached to NASA in, in the late 60s and actually made some of this shielding, heat shielding, for the Apollo 11 mission, okay? So when you see the Apollo 11 on the moon or above the moon or whatever, my old man actually built part of the, uh, or worked on the heat shielding for that mission, which was made of gold, gold foil, thick gold foil. And uh, this is kind of similar to that. So this this may be some kind of shielding because it's got perforations in it for some reason. I mean, that's probably done to save weight. So it does look like part of something that would have been on the rover or the rover descent stages, okay? Because um, the perforations are there to, to keep the weight down, probably, I would say. So there we are. What do you think? Answers on the postcard, as usual. Leave a comment below. Is this part of the rover? Could well be. It probably is, but no one's been able to match it up yet. And I've gone through a lot of these images trying to match this up, and it, it doesn't. Um, it, it looks like it should, but it doesn't. So that's weird. Now, I'll put a link to this main page here, um, this um, Mars exploration page, 
and perhaps some of you could help me out because really what we need to do is a whole bunch of us need to go through all these images of the actual rover being built the different stages of it being built and then you need to use them the, the magnifier or download the image and zoom in or use the magnifier like I've done here um, and try and f see if you can find any of those holes in that pattern like we have on the metal panel on Mars okay because it does I mean this is all smooth you, but it could be an internal part, right? It could be an actual internal part that isn't always visible. And uh, it's kind of been torn away and then kind of flown a whole mile away from all the other wreckage. That is possible, but it seems like a long way off. Leave a comment, give a thumbs up. It really helps. Please share on social media. I will see you soon.